You can say what you like about fan bases, and usually there's a lot to be said, but amidst all the crap that some of them come out with, there's a thin layer of imagination that shows just how creative they can be. Diehards know what they like. I believe the phrase, let's see you do better, comes to mind when discussing ROM hacks. Most of the time, ROM hacks aren't going to surpass the original. In fact, most of them go in a completely different direction, sometimes in deeply disturbing directions. But they serve as a small insight into what fans like the most from their favourite franchises. Reminds me a lot of Kaizo Mario and how its reputation grew from frame-perfect jumping puzzles and throwing invisible coin blocks all over the place. Those are also my favourite parts of Super Mario World. Due to the popularity of these types of games, I've got really quite a large list to choose from. I mean, most of them are a little shit, hence why I've chopped this video down to a top 5, but the cream of the crop are a real sight to behold. And most of them are free. They'd probably make a half-decent Christmas gift. If you're cheap. One of the major benefits to making a game yourself is you can have the sorts of combinations and crossovers that you'd struggle to see as an official game. And there's no reason why not really. Combining some games can really shake up the gameplay you'd expect from a big name. You can have a Mario Sonic crossover called... Samari. You can have a Mario Final Fantasy crossover. Seriously, Mario is almost like the blank canvas for crossovers. But my personal favourite comes in the form of Mega Man in the Mushroom Kingdom. Where Mega Man does some platforming, I guess. He's never done that before! I think if the standard Mega Man games didn't give you an arm cannon, we wouldn't hold them in such high regard. Not to rag on the platform in sections too much, but it definitely helps having ranged weapons to take down enemies that are deliberately designed to trip you up. Mega Man in the Mushroom Kingdom is far more forgiving than most Mega Man games, but that's okay, because it lets you take in the surprisingly good level design and enemy placement. Incidentally, these guys act like normal Mega Man enemies, but have been reskinned to fit with the Mario theme. Though I've got to say, there's a few inconsistencies here and there. Like how all the standard stages tend to stay away from insta-kill spikes, but as soon as you get to Wily's first stage, which is just a reskin of the equivalent from Mega Man 1, complete with Yellow Devil... OH GOD THEY'RE BACK! And the final boss? Oh, just, just Wily. Why not Wily and Bowser? Then I could call them Wowser. Mmm, we were so close. Across nearly every gaming franchise, there exists one title in the library that is significantly and perhaps even famously harder than everything else. Hard to say really why this is, whether it's just a small blip in the usual standards of making everything fair or just straight up easy, or if it's something more sadistic with the creator watching on as dedicated fans crumble to its diabolical difficulty. And while the Zelda series had two of these, the original Legend of Zelda and Zelda 2, they were back to back and the learning curve was smoothed out for a link to the past. But leave it to a ROM hack to put things back to the way they used to be. A Link to the Past is one of those games that is easy enough to play through, but has enough complexities that it's reasonably fun to speedrun as well. So for the people who have mastered A Link to the Past and have seen all that it has to offer, Legend of Zelda Parallel Worlds is the game for you. It's also really fucking hard. I'm still trying to work out if I hate this game for being so unforgiving, sometimes down to bad design, or if I love it for offering up this kind of challenge that the Zelda series rarely sees anymore, but for now I'll put it on here with the proviso that Parallel Worlds is not for the faint of heart. Need examples? Oh, I got loads of those. How about going into the first dungeon without having a sword? Or how enemies rarely drop hearts? Or maybe unavoidable damage is more your thing? And if all that doesn't get you, the lack of a clear direction can force you to wander around aimlessly looking for something important. Which honestly reminds me a little too much of the first Zelda game, not sure if that's a good thing or not. But if you're very familiar with A Link to the Past and its mechanics and want a brand new challenge, then I'm sure Parallel Worlds will give you something to chew on. Maybe your patience. One of the benefits of making a ROM hack is being able to make a pseudo sequel to a game people might have enjoyed, or making a much better version of a pre-existing sequel that took too many liberties. It's not quite writing all the wrongs as it's only a fan-made hack, but it can give people the kind of closure they were sorely missing. I revisited Castlevania 2 Simon's Quest recently, and while it does have its moments, it still remains a far more boring experience than the first game. 
It's not exactly the worst game ever, nowadays it isn't even the worst Castlevania game ever, but you can understand the disappointment when the excitement and rage towards the first game disintegrated into tedium towards incessant farming and day-night cycles. But never fear, fan hacks are here to save the day, and Castlevania Chorus of Mysteries will cure what ails you. Now this is how you do a Castlevania sequel! No fucking about with grinding hearts or talking to cryptic townspeople, just balls to the wall whip thwipping action! I mean fine, you can tell that it's a hack of the first Castlevania game and there's nothing radically different about it, but everything is made just that tiny bit better, which honestly is how you should approach a sequel. The graphics have been sharpened up, some of the animations now look amazing, and hey, here's one for you, it's even harder than the first game! Not in a test of your ability to keep doing the same thing for hours at a time like Simon's Quest was, just more of what made the series so much fun. And that's the way the world should be. Considering the effort that goes into making a good ROM hack of a game, creating a Pokemon ROM hack seems like the steepest of steep inclines you could ever try and scale. A lot of work goes into every new installment into the main series, not least of all the new Pokemon added, even with some of the more questionable Pokemon designs in the last few years. So you can imagine how pleasantly surprised I was just how many Pokemon ROM hacks there are out there. Some add new regions, some add new Pokemon, and some, like Pokemon Snakewood, are just... really fucking awesome. The nature of Pokemon games means that you've got to keep it relatively kid-friendly. You can take a few liberties here and there, like the Distortion World in Pokemon Platinum, but in general, you've got to keep it E for everyone. Which is why Pokemon Snakewood sticks out like a sore thumb. The world of Pokemon, gripped by a zombie apocalypse. This is the kind of stuff that ROM hacks were made for. Pokemon Snakewood would never be able to happen given Pokemon's demographic, but give the right people the tools to create something like this, and we end up with something incredible. I've been wanting a Pokemon game that doesn't feel all that normal for some time now, and when you load it up and see a guy standing in the middle of nowhere, also Professor Birch's Psycho Bulbasaur, what the fuck was that? You can piece together pretty quickly that this isn't going to be your standard Pokemon game. Even more so when your starter Pokemon are coughing Baltoy in Paris, and when Professor Birch is seen being chased around by a zombie kid with a zombie Pokemon. It's the lighter side of the apocalypse, really. You're not really pursuing some kind of self aggrandizing role as champion of the world. You're just looking to survive in this twisted world where eggs can be hostile. Just go along for the ride and don't get munched. There's an unwritten standard you come to expect from ROM hacks, really, most things that are fan-made. Without the know-how and expertise that comes with the people who made the game in the first place, it's likely that you're going to be punching above your weight if the game is playable. And so, I was searching around for ROM hacks, seeing the wild variety and quality, when I stumbled across yet another Mario game. Yet Mario Adventure doesn't feel much like a ROM hack. It feels more like an actual professional release. When you have a pile of dozens of Mario ROM hacks, you're bound to end up with a few that are just a little bit more special than others. Before doing any research, I was thinking about Super Mario Star Road, which is a complete overhaul of Super Mario 64, but just playing a little bit of Mario Adventure convinced me that this is one of the best 2D Mario games ever made. Some of the ideas used in this game are just extraordinary. The sort of things where you sit back and ponder why Nintendo never tried this themselves. Mario Adventure is, at its core, a hack of Super Mario Bros. 3, but rather than changing a few things aesthetically or filling it full of user-made levels, this is completely different. Sometimes when browsing Mario Maker, you might find a level or two that feels like it could have easily been in a proper Mario game, and Mario Adventure is a whole game full of this. And yet rather than sit back on its ability to reproduce Mario-esque levels at a high standard, Mario Adventure goes that extra mile to weave in original concepts like new power-ups, a boss at the end of every stage, and even some new enemies. It doesn't just use Super Mario Bros. 3's engine, it expands on it, giving the game a real freshness to it. There's even some weather effects that change the physics of each level but are never anchored to any specific level, which gives each stage something I've been looking for in Mario for a very long time. Unpredictability and randomness. And even with all this new stuff that may well take some getting used to, Mario Adventure comes with infinite lives. So even though you might die a few times, the fun never does. This being Robert Luigi, and what's missing from a lot of games nowadays is that childlike sense of fun where people are making a game that just ticks boxes rather than engages an audience. 
ROM hacks in some indie games show what inside knowledge can do for the quality of a game. After all, who knows better what makes a game fun than a gamer? Hello everybody, hope you enjoyed that. I wanted to make this a top 10, this was supposed to be the end of month top 10 thing that isn't voted on, but I realised that stretching it out to 10 entries would have been a bad idea, you do start to lose a bit of quality after a while. These last two weeks or so, I have seen some weird shit, so I'm looking forward to something more normal next week. The poll's still going on by the way, get your butt over to Twitter and Facebook and have your say. Your votes are like nectar to me.